Sunday afternoon tilt between these two teams as they have their second game in conference play. And there you see Christian Smith get the leading scorer for the Sycamores and the sixth man of the year last season in the Missouri Valley Conference. Big shoes to fill in taking over the leadership role from Jake Odom, of course, uh, left because of graduation. You and I talked to Greg Lansing earlier today before the tip of today's game as we are underway here in Terre Haute. He talked about there's really no way you can replace a guy like Jake Odom, but he loves Christian's personality. Right, he said he was the, the backbone and the personality of the team and does all the necessary talking on defense and offense. And he's somebody that they look to go to in every situation. Jalen Brown starts at the point for the Aces. Brown on the drive, and he gets our first two of the afternoon. First two of the afternoon, and uh, something that Coach Lanson talked about was their defensive presence, and, and that they want to be, you know, tough defensively uh, the whole season, and something that they lay the hat on. So. Surprising to see the easy bucket right off the tip. Right? Kitchell there you see getting the start, setting the screen, and Scott's three attempts just off the mark. And Gideus with the rebound. He started already with, with his uh, march to another double-double with the first rebound. Gideus on Justin Gant, the Terre Haute product. Now switching off. Jalen Brown has the first four points of this afternoon's game. Last two possessions, uh, offense has gone through uh, either Simmons or, or Big E. Well, the last two possessions that we've seen in this game for Indiana State and the first two of the game have been turnovers. And talking to Greg Lansing, that's really been his team's big bugaboo. They had over 20 turnovers despite the victory on the road against Illinois State on Wednesday. Yeah, tough to do. Tough to have more than 20 turnovers and still come out with a victory. And that was something, like you say, Coach Lanson spoke about, was them keeping their turnovers down and uh, stop shooting themselves in the foot. Ooh, a little strong by Christian Smith. And Moscovich just picks up the rebound. He Gideus from the outside. One and done on that possession for the Aces. Smith loses the handle, and there's another turnover already for Indiana State. That's two in the opening two plus minutes. Yeah. Got to hold on to the basketball. And that's one of the many great things that Marty Simmons' squad does. If you look at some of the stats there, one of the tops in assist to turnover ratio in the Missouri Valley Conference. There's one there. Uh, early on, sloppy play, but ISU, young team, will have tendencies to turn it over, but must find a way to get shots and take care of the ball every trip down. Brenton Scott, the Fort Wayne, Indiana product, gets the Sycamores on the board. And a battle inside. We just saw a shot of Greg Lansing there, Winston. And you know, one of the things that I think is going to be interesting as we see Brenton Scott's lay in here to get the Sycamores on the board is who does he match up to try to at least contain the hot shooting of DJ Ballantyne? I think he's got to go with Christian Smith. He's uh, he's someone that's going to try to get it done on both ends of the floor. He's going to work his tail off on a, a defensive end and, and find a way to get some uh, offensive uh, opportunities as well. That's a two for Blake Simmons. Boy, I'll tell you what, if Blake could really start to heat it up for Evansville, that would be an added bonus for this Aces team as they get deep into Valley play here in January and February. Yeah, once or twice. Uh, in the Valley, teams are going to start scouting and do a great job on uh, Valentine. He's going to become the focal point. But like you said, Marty, I'm sorry, Blake can start, you know, heating up. That that would be a uh, bonus. Valentine with the block. And again, Indiana State doing a nice job on the defensive end on the glass. 
Scott inside, Kitchell inside for two. And it's a two-point lead for Evansville. Kitchell made that play by running the floor, big fella. Rim running and, and, and getting the easy one. Great pass. turnover for Indiana State. Jalen Brown with a hot start for Evansville. Aces on the road as they travel up Interstate 41 with a two-point lead. Just underway, it's the NBC on ESPN3 on this Sunday afternoon as the Aces with the early lead. All right, let's get to our Missouri Valley Conference standings and the early going odds. It's brought to you by Perina Dog Chow. For every dog, there is a dog chow. How about your Missouri State Bears? A huge win yesterday at home against Drake as they start out conference play at 2-0. Also, Bradley picking up their first win beating Southern Illinois as we take a look at the early standings. Yeah, yeah, early standings looking good. Bears off to a great start, 8-6 and six overall. Evansville right behind them, uh, trying to tie this thing up with the victory today. Both teams off to really good starts. Loyola, by the way, of course, a great start in non-conference play, picking up their first win of the season on Wednesday. They're at Northern Iowa today, of course, the Cats suffering that loss against the Aces to open up their season down in Evansville. We'll have that for you on ESPN3. Bruce Hurdle and Kevin Lehman will bring it to you immediately following this telecast here from Terre Haute. And that'll be Indiana State basketball. Yeah, I thought that would be the matchup with uh, Kristen Smith on, uh, on Valentine, but uh, not happening now. Greg Lansing switching things up. Etherington just checking into the game, and he'll tie the score at the 15-minute mark. Etherington, the freshman from Cicero, Indiana. Boy, big rebound by Rizoya, and he'll get the putback. The Villanova transfer looking good inside. Yeah, that's what Indiana State has to do. They got to find a way to keep Evansville off the offensive glass. That's another one. Here's a steal for Boo Gibson. Simmons trying to keep it alive, and here comes Trey Bennett. Smith with the finish. Great pass by Bennett. Great pass by Bennett. Smith running the floor. Great pass. Trey Bennett led the Sycamores with 15 points in their last second victory against Illinois State on Wednesday in Bloomington Normal.
Gibson skies and he'll get it to fall. Nice pull up, great one-on-one -on -one move, one baseline, nice move. Gibson, the sophomore from Texas. T.J. Bell. And after the under 16 timeout, Winston, we're seeing both of these offense get a little bit more of a flow going on, aren't we? Starting to move a little more, uh, especially Evansville. Got some continuity going down here. I, Indiana State uh, early on uh, standing a little bit, and I'm sure we got a bucket. Indiana State got a bucket, but I'm sure that's now how Coach Lanson drew that one up. Trey Bennett new to the team. He is a junior college All-American last year for Lamar State. There's Trey there. Dumped down to Gant. Turnover number five for Indiana State. Good high-low action, I thought of, but just couldn't get it to uh, from Bell to Kitchell. Great look, though. I'm sorry, Gant. Benson. Here's Valentine. Marked up by Scott this time. Gibson on the drive. And the putback by Benson. Another offensive uh, rebound. Put back by Evansville. Got to find a way to keep them off the glass. They're just uh, relentless on the glass, and ISU has to find a way to keep them off. Bennett lost the handle. Etherington gets it back. Still a lot of time on the shot clock here. Working it inside to Bell, double team. Boy, what help side defense by Christian Benson. Good interior passing though, but yeah, alert help side recovery and, and the block, but good interior passing by ISU. Sycamore's basketball when we come back. They trail it. Who could resist the call of America's number one puppy food brand? DHA and essential nutrients also found in mother's milk. Purina Puppy Chow. Large original or flatbread pepperoni pizza for only ten dollars. Casey's famous for pizza. Do you remember? Do you remember? Celebrate 25 years of Arch Madness. Don't miss the 2015 Missouri Valley Conference Men's Basketball Tournament, March 5th through 8th at the Scott Trade Center. Get your tickets and get to St. Louis for Arch Madness. The Shockers will go to the NCAA 34-0. Who could resist the call of America's number one puppy food brand? With DHA and essential nutrients also found in mother's milk. Purina Puppy Chow. Just underway, it's the NBC on ESPN3 from Terre Haute, Indiana. Sycamore is playing host to their in-state rivals, the Evansville Purple Aces. All right, let's get to today's NBC Scholar Athlete of the Game, and it is Indiana State's Justin Gant, the senior forward from right here in Terre Haute, has a 3.35 Cuton GPA in criminology and was a 2014 first-team NBC Scholar Athlete selection. Congratulations to Justin Gant from Indiana State. 
five turnovers as we talked about Winston in the opening eight minutes of this one for the Sycamores again. Greg Lansing even told us he's trying to figure out a way for his ball club to try to hold on to the basketball, take care of it a little bit more. Yeah, five turnovers, way too much in the early onset of the ball game, I think. Uh, and, and what they have to do is slow down a little bit. They're young, but uh, yeah, if they slow down a little bit, I think those turnovers will decrease a little bit. Bennett at the There's buzzer. The And the Sycamores have their first lead of the afternoon. And now they go to a zone. Go zone, yeah. A little two, three zone. They're really active up top, too, and that, that's key. Great pass. They go zone, but Evansville does a great job of running the guy baseline and getting the ball to the high post area and great dump down pass. Indiana State started one of four shooting. Now they're five of six. Ooh, Bell got robbed right there. Rim was unkind to him. Little green man on the rim for Bell today. Stafford in the game there, number one. He's one of the newcomers for Marty's squad. Didn't really. See any action at all in the victory against Northern Iowa at home on Thursday? Yeah, they show zone that just that just that one possession. They're back to man now. Nice pass inside. Oh, Great what help. a block by TJ yeah, Bell. It was. Well, Bennett hits his last two shots. Look out if he gets hot. And the foul's going to be on Justin Gann as he has the job of trying to defend Big E and pick up the foul there at number five. Simmons checking back into the game along with DJ Ballantyne. Great action underneath. Uh, out of bounds set right there. Great action with the curls. Grant Pusatter. Sophomore from Illinois picks up the foul there. And so it'll send Jalen Brown to the free throw line. Jalen this season is 80%, and he hits his first. Jalen started now five straight games, had a career high 15 earlier this season against San Francisco. Hits them both and puts the Aces back in the lead as we have several lead changes here in the opening half of play between the Sycamores and the Aces from Terre Haute, Indiana, and the MVC on ESPN3. Nice play by Agidius to keep that one alive as he was falling out of bounds and got it to his teammate. Yeah, Smith on the other end is getting some great looks. Just needs one to go down for him. And Evansville calls a timeout, Brazoia trying to tell his teammate where he needed to be to try to get that help as he was in a bad spot right there, wasn't he, Winston? Yeah, dribble baseline. He, I guess he was looking for his uh, dribble baseline. Usually you try to get one of your guys to go baseline with you and uh, didn't happen, so I think that was the reason he was getting on Brown. So Evansville will burn their lose it, or use it or lose it first half timeout. They'll have 21 seconds left on the shot clock here. Mishla Brazoia, he's a Villanova transfer. In fact, in his first start earlier this season in non-conference play, picked up a double-double. He represented Croatia a couple of years ago in the under-18 tournament where the Croats actually won the gold medal. And he was averaging 15 points a game. Could do just a little bit of everything, kind of like a Gideon's there. Big E couldn't finish that one. Yeah, great live play, live play for uh, 
for Big E, just couldn't convert. Zoya giving Big E some help there on the defensive end, and they create the turnover. Yeah, another great look down low. But they're doing a great job of coming over to help, to help Big E uh, on the defensive end. Ishla. Uh, looks like he's going to pick up the foul. Second team foul on the Aces. Every shot that goes up on the offensive end down here, Scott, Evansville does a great job of, of going to the glass and trying to rebound, trying to get extra opportunities for the ball club. And, and that's where they're going to be super tough. It's on that offensive glass. You see just two points in our two players that were featured, and Christian Smith with the turnover as he travels there. Yeah. And for Indiana State, that's now turnover number six. But remember, in the game on Thursday against Northern Iowa, it was only four points for D.J. Ballantyne in the opening 20 minutes, but he opened things up and finished with 17 in the upset win over Ben Jacobson's Northern Iowa Panthers. Yeah, he's going to find himself grinding out a whole lot of ball games because of the scouting report. The scouting report is going to be geared, geared toward him, and he's just going to have to find a way to just keep grinding and grinding. If it's not going well for him early on, just keep playing. That time, four white jerseys underneath the glass as they collect the miss. Yeah, one of the few times that Evansville didn't go to the glass. Jalen Brown picking up the foul. Yeah, I State has to find a way to get side, top, side again. They're, uh, the ball is getting stagnant and held on one side. Everybody's just rushing just a little too much. Great pass. Wow, kids are wide open underneath. Great penetration. Got his feet in the lane and, and, and found Kitchen right up underneath. Great pass. Now had four lead changes in the opening half. Brown thought about the three. They got a they mismatch, but yeah, they yeah. just switched it up. They had Christian Smith on a Gideus. Yeah, and they do a great job of going top, side, top again. This is the fourth time that they've changed sides of the floor for an wow. easy bucket. Simmons with one on the shot clock hits the runner down the baseline. Great ball movement. Now Christian Smith on the big guy. How about that? Yeah, what helped that opportunity was they went from one side of the floor to the other. And, and and you can do that and get the defense to moving. Shots come a little easier for you. Valentine. Great shot. Great ball movement. Change sides of the floor three times that time. That's huge. When you can get, like I said earlier, when you can get the team moving from side to side, shots are a little easier. Now Christian Smith also starting to heat it up. He's Starting. hit the last two baskets for the trees. Yeah, a lot of individual effort there. Christian has to work a lot harder on the offensive end as opposed to, to Valentine. They set great screens for him and, and, and move the ball from side to side, and therefore shots are a little easier to come by for him. Another great pin down. Wow. Turnover for Blake Simmons in Evansville. Yeah. Sycamore's basketball when we come back. TJ Bell with a huge block. Get Three's up by one.
14 minutes into this one. We've already had nine lead changes, folks. It's the MVC on ESPN3 with the Sigmores up by one. Hey, I want to remind you, you can stay tuned for our halftime report, a presentation of State Farm for auto, home, life, and banking. Get to a better state. Find an agent or get a quote at statefarm.com. We'll have an interview with Coach Lancy. We'll bring you some highlights. And we will also have a feature on Big E, Igidius. Escovichus, the junior from Lithuania, who is having another huge season. In fact, folks, in his last 23 games, he's had 16 double-doubles. And as Winston told you, nine of those 16 have come just this season. 13 games played, nine double-doubles. That's incredible. As a great player as you were, you even have to appreciate that. No doubt, working uh, the way that Big E does, that's, that's, that's incredible. Oh, e 3 coming off the bench. It's a triple. Largest lead right now for the Sycamores at four. Smith gets the assist and rightfully so. Great job of getting to the lane and, and, and finding the shooter over there in the corner. Great job of getting some dribble penetration. Three jerseys surrounding Ballantyne as soon as he received that pass. Great, great job of getting to the lane right there by Smith and, and finding a uh, shooter in the corner. Valentine to the line, and DJ a 75% free throw shooter, fourth in the nation in points per game, but can't overlook what the young man does. He also helps out his teammates. He's fifth in a conference in assists. Yeah, uh, and, and that might go up with the attention that he's going to draw. Oh, yeah. Especially in conference play. But I can't say enough about his teammates, how they do a great job of setting screens and, and, and trying to get them open. Well, the officials are going to go over to the replay monitor, and they're going to take a look at, I think they're trying to just sort out exactly who committed the foul on D.J. Ballantyne. Because, again, there were three white jerseys <laughs> draped over number 31. Now, remember, in the Missouri Valley Conference, we have replay systems in all 10 arenas in the Valley. Checking my rule to make sure we got the right foul. Just kind of passing there. And Mike Stewart coming over and telling us exactly what we just explained. We're making sure they have the right guy who fouled Ballantyne. Mike Stewart, Paul Jansen and Don Daly, a Class A group of officials that we have here in Terre Haute, Indiana for this battle of the Hoosier State in the Valley between these two teams. You mentioned from Ballantyne in the victory upset win over Ben Jacobson's Northern Iowa Panthers, ranked 23rd this week. Valentine finished with 17. That stopped his eight-game streak of scoring 20 or more points. 17, and I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he was 7-7 seven seven from the free throw line. So, yeah, his percentages go up there, and yeah, he's going to have to make free throws. He's, I can say, he's going to draw a lot of attention. game on Thursday in the opening 20 minutes. The Panthers pretty ha had a really good control of the game. Their defense was just absolutely stifling. But Marty Simmons' squad returned the favor in the second half as Northern Iowa just couldn't find any rhythm at all on offense nor could they shoot it, and hence we see that defense carrying over here in the first half with the eight turnovers for Indiana State. There's a foul away from the basketball, and Indiana State will get it back. That's a foul goes on the Aces, their third team foul. Yeah, a lot of coaches talk defense, but this, these two teams, I think, will absolutely lay their hats on the defensive end. Benz and Scott with the three, and it's a five-point lead. All in, the, Sycamore. the shots that they've made have been created by good dribble penetration. Good dribble penetration and finding teammates 
open teammates. Simmons with the answer. And on this end, shots have been made by teammates getting teammates open. Evansville's done a great job of setting screens, getting the shooters open. Blake three for four from the field this afternoon. Bell on Agidius. And there's that help defense right there, Winston. There it is. Help Vincent. defense. And the ninth turnover committed. They're going to count the bucket, too. Yeah. As the block was after it hit the glass. Why well, see T.J. Bell. It's got to be driving Coach Lanson crazy. And, and, and like he mentioned to us, young ball club, and, and they need to value the basketball. It just happened, happened, have, hasn't happened yet. I'm sure it will, but it's it's got to be driving crazy. Nine turnovers thus far. Benson will complete the three-point play and give the Aces the lead back at one as we cross the four-minute mark remaining in our opening half of play. It's the NBC on ESPN3. Trey Bennett, air ball. could almost consider that one a turnover when no one touches the ball but him and and uh, the quality of shot they got. Bennett on the break. Trey Bennett will go to the line when we come back. 3.32 left here in Terre Haute. Evansville regains the lead at one. Could resist the call of America's number one puppy food brand. With DHA and essential nutrients also found in mother's milk. Purina Puppy Chow. You want affordable health care coverage that helps cover rising medical costs. And that's exactly what you'll get with Coventry. We offer a variety of affordable plans for you, your family, or business. To find out more, visit CoventryHealthcare.com today. Health, wellness, Coventry. Large original or flatbread pepperoni pizza for only ten dollars. Casey's famous for pizza. Who could resist the call of America's number one puppy food brand? With DHA and essential nutrients also found in mother's milk. Purina Puppy Chow. At Etna. We believe a health insurance company should be as passionate about their members' health as they would be their own. Because a healthier you leads to a healthier community, and healthier communities lead to a healthier world. Winston Garland, Scott Warman back with you. NBC on ESPN3 from Terre Haute, Indiana, and the Holman Center. Right now, the Sycamores drill. Marty Simmons' is Evansville Purple Aces by a score of 28 to 27. When you look at the two teams in the records, especially non-conference play, some might be a little bit surprised that Indiana State rather close, well, really close right now with just only the one-point deficit at home. But when we talked to Greg Lancy before today's game, really thought that his team was really starting to develop. And of course, that starts in practice. Yeah, no doubt. He said that, uh, you know, his team's uh, really learn, need to learn how to practice, and, and, uh, and I'm sure that will come young ball club but uh, you know coach Lanson like you said he said he's super happy with the uh, with the effort and and you know just like to see him practice a little harder and that comes with maturity. Trey Bennett the Juco transfer to the line for Indiana State well you made the transfer before you went and played your final two seasons at what was then Southwest Missouri State what was that transition like for you Winston? Incredible sort of like uh, what coach Lanson was talking about um, trying to adjust to the game, uh, the speed of the game. And I'll never forget my first couple of practices with Coach Boone, I was, I was kicked out because I think that I'm, I'm going just as hard as I can 
and he didn't think that I was going hard at all. So uh, this is what Coach Lance was talking about, learning to practice and, and, and you know, learning how to practice and the intensity level that needs to, to go on with that. Igidius inside. Boy, that was nice. High off the glass that time. Wednesday. High off the glass and then started with great ball movement. Top side, top, and, and, and that's what, uh, what uh, Evansville has been doing. And getting the ball from side to side and, and, and doing a great job of looking inside. Quick first step by Christian Smith. It Jamie couldn't get it to fall. He's getting great looks. Ballantyne leans in. Bins in Scott. And now DJ wants to slow the pace down here a little bit. Under two and a half remaining in the first half of play. Both teams getting good looks. Uh, eventually, it'll start to go, but yeah, some great looks from both sides. Nice kick out by Ballantyne. Boy, both teams a little ice cold here after the other four timeout. Yeah, ISU is doing a better job of boxing out and, and rebounding the ball on the defensive end. Tie up and a jump ball call, and the possession error will favor the Purple Aces. Yeah. And, and, and that's been the difference, I think. Um, great help side by Big E, great help by, by Blake. Yeah, how many times have we seen actually Blake Simmons, among others, but predominantly Blake? Getting that help side defense for Big E when they get inside. Coach's son, he understands where he should be, and he's there. Understands the importance of help side defense and helping his teammate. And that was last touch by Gideus. Sycamore's basketball. Really impressed with Hitchell, how he's uh, taking the ownership of, of keeping Big E off the glass. He's done a tremendous job the last couple possessions down the floor of boxing uh, Big E off and keeping him off the glass. There's Kitchell. Nice. Great post feed, great turnaround, facing the basket shot for Kitchell. Great job. Six points for Kitchell in the opening half of play. Sycamore's up by one. Benson on the drive and Foul is called. It's only ten team fouls with just thirty seconds left for each team. Yeah. And make it 11. We call that one on Jalen Moore. Yeah, make it 11. Excuse me. Yeah, but that's been the uh, MO of the, the uh, Purple Aces the first half, setting good screens and, and trying to get their teammate open, but uh, what's the for an offensive foul there? Greg Lansing get, takes his use it or lose it first half timeout with 30 seconds left. They'll have the shot clock turned off so they can have the final shot in the opening 20 minutes of play with the Sycamore is up on the aces by a score of 31 to 30. Be interesting to see how Greg wants to try to set this thing up. I would imagine first thing he's going to say is don't turn the ball over right Winston. Let's get something. Let's get something <laughs> out of this. Uh, let's not shoot ourselves in the foot. But the uh, last couple of possessions it was um, some great dribble drive action. And, and finding spot-up shooters in the corner. Or uh, 
well they might even go through Kitchell down on the post right. he's done a great job. Yeah. Escovitches with only one personal foul. So no foul trouble for either team as we stand right now. There you see the two biggies for the Purple Aces kind of quiet in the opening 20 minutes of play. Yeah. Eight points combined for the for the uh, big two. Smith, Christian Smith is spread out right here to the bottom of your screen. See if he's the go-to guy on this play. Kitchell is blocked up against Igidius. Brown on the reverse. No. And time will run out. Didn't get the bucket, but coach is probably pleased with getting the shot off anyway. 20 minutes in the books here in Terre Haute, and Greg Lansing's Indiana State Sycamores have the lead at the break 31 to 30 after 20 minutes of play here at the Holman Center in Terre Haute, Indiana. Let's get Greg Lansing's plans for the second half. It's brought to you by the St. Charles Convention and Visitors Bureau. And uh, Coach, uh, your thoughts on the opening 20 minutes of play with your squad? I thought with the both teams really played hard. Uh, obviously, just looking at us, we did some over-penetrated, over-dribbled, turn it over a little bit. We really guarded for 20, 25 seconds, and then a loose ball here or there, and they got some buckets in the, the clock, so we got to clean that up. Clean that up, and I know you talked to Winston and I before the game and trying to keep those turnovers down to a minimum, right? Well, if I can suit him up, that might help. <laughs> us They're a tremendous defensive team. They really help. We just have to make a simple play. Coach, thanks so much. Good thanks, luck guys. Thanks, coach. That is Greg Lansing, the head coach of the Indiana State Sycamores. His plans for the second half brought to you by the St. Charles, Missouri Convention and Visitors Bureau. To discover St. Charles, go to historicstcharles.com or call 800-366-2427. State Farm Halftime Report heading your way from Terre Haute when we come back right after this. Kitchell and Gant matching up with um, the Gideons for the most part. Indiana State with one more rebound, too. Okay. Thirteen seven Colts.
One point lead for the Singapores here at the break in Terre Haute, Indiana, and the NBC on ESPN3 is brought to you by Perina Dog Chow. For every dog, there's a dog chow. As we welcome to our halftime report, a presentation of State Farm for Auto Home Life and Making. Get to a better state, find an agent, or get a quote at statefarm.com. Let's take a look at our highlights from the opening 20 minutes of play. Winston Garland, Scott Warman with you from Terre Haute, Indiana. And for Evansville, they got off the board nice. Christian Vincent with a nice two. Still a great start. Uh, Vincent headed to the basket. Great strong finish. And of course, Boo Gibson right here getting the easy deuces. Indiana State really clamping down on Big E and DJ Ballantyne, as we showed you. Only eight points for the two Biggies inside. Meanwhile, Kitchell inside doing a Terrific job, heel on McGant as they're matching mano a mano with Egidius in the opening half of play. And of course, this three pointer here by Trey Bennett, and the Sycamores lead it by one at 31 30 at the break here at the Holman Center. Stick around, more of our State Farm halftime report when we continue from Western Indiana right after this. Indiana State also 14 to 7 on the bench points. Yeah, I saw that. Okay. You're dancing. <laughs> Who's that? Oh, okay. He's watching, huh? Welcome back to the Holman Center and our halftime report brought to you by State Farm continues from Terre Haute, Indiana. Right now it's time for today's profile. It's made possible by Coventry Healthcare and Aetna Company. Drew Amon takes a look at Evansville's junior center, Egidius Moscovichus. Arguably no Evansville center has played more of a significant role early in his career the Nagidius Muscavichus and Marty Simmons' nine years as UE head coach. I just hope I, I've improved at least from last year. Last season, Nagidius led the Valley with eight rebounds per game and paced the league, shooting 63%. His inside presence is well documented, but he's also a threat running the floor. I think he has the ability to be one of the better running big guys in the country and uh, we just got to do a better job of, of being consistent with it. At 6'10", 225, running like that in transition allows Muscaviches to bring yet another dimension to the Evansville offense. We got to push the ball harder in transition and when he's running like that, we got to give it to him. I think he has the unique ability for a guy his size to really get up and down the floor at a high rate of speed. It's clear how quickly Agidius has adjusted to the Aces system, now two years after being named to the All-Valley freshman team. I'm just locked in what the, what the coaches say. If they say, like, go there and you'll be open, I'll try to do that. So I feel good being in the system. 
and I believe our team feels good being in the system as well. Preseason All-Valley Honorable mention. Miscavichus is part of a team picked to finish fourth in the conference. We're practicing hard, of course. There's some down days or something like that, as in every team, but we feel great. University of Heaven's Hall Athletics, this is Igidius. How may I help you today? Igidius spent part of his summer days in the UE Athletic Office, working as an intern for that department. I wanted to have to get a new experience because, as you know, I was in the boys' field last year. So being in the athletic office, it's like probably a step forward. One more step forward for Miscavichus as he thinks about what he may or may not want to do when he's done playing basketball. How people work behind like the sport, sporting events because they deal with the ticket like tickets, how to sell season season tickets, how to deal with people like because you know like people sometimes are kind of grumpy. <laughs> for now, Igidius tries to help the Aces get their first league title since 1999. For the Missouri Valley Conference, I'm Drew Ammon. Drew, great stuff, man. Today's profile is made possible by Coventry Healthcare and Aetna Company. Visit CoventryHealthcare.com for more information, health, wellness, Coventry Healthcare. Stick around. More of our halftime report brought to you by State Farm continues from Terre Haute. And